Committee rules 30 to 3 in favor of streamlining Vault Zero's computer backup system costs from $24 billion to $2.3 billion. These cuts will take place immediately. This ruling was based on the dwindling chance for actual nuclear war taking place, along with much needed pay increases to senior committee members. Furthermore, the subterranean vault compartments that were designated for backup computer and life support systems will now be renovated for senior vault personnel leisure facilities. The committee has a construction agenda that must be finalized by mid-March. The new facility options are as follows. Several top quality restaurants with 10,000 square feet of cold storage, seven smoke rooms with piano bars, and two subterranean hunting grounds stocked with rare animals purchased from world-renowned zoos. All of these are feasible, but require an additional $12.4 billion, which can be acquired by, which can be acquired by, which can be acquired by. Good question, Dr. Jones. I would be happy to explain why we're taking the path less traveled when compared to mundane computer systems. One advantage the calculator has over normal computers is the electro-organic linking terminal. Our tests conclude that the CPU can share tasks and receive data from pseudo-cryogenic stored brains that are maintained in an oxygenated tank. These brains are currently that of lab rodents, but our calculations indicate that human brains can be preserved in the same fashion. The brains will be fed specifically formulated nutrients to sustain suspended life. In turn, they will assist the calculator's CPU in vault management, including life support, food production and distribution, pacification robot protocol, and vault zero defenses. This neural network will also assist in Vault Zero's primary function, to initiate mankind's post-war rebirth, when outside temperature, radiation levels, and poison particle counts return to acceptable levels, Vault Zero will remotely activate the Exodus Protocol, which will initialize the integration of all vault dwellers onto the planet's surface. The brains are to be harvested from a select group of geniuses that were chosen by committee for their skills and their cute haircuts. This is third scientist Lewis. Things are going from bad to worse. We should have installed more backup systems for the calculator. The irony is that the committee members that voted on Vault Zero's backup system budget cuts are now all dead, but it gets worse. 63% of Vault Zero's population is now dead, while 15% of the living are now severely brain damaged and can no longer care for themselves. My frustration builds with the fact that I can't even get into the calculator's chamber anymore due to lack of authorization. If only first scientist Napstarsky or second scientist Jones had survived instead of me, they might have been able to repair the electro-organic linking terminal. And who knows? They might even have saved Vault Zero. I'll do what I can, but... So far, it really looks like a... This is third scientist Lewis with a report on the cause for the perimeter alarm. Late last night, a heavily armed group of mutated humans attempted to force their way into the vault. I've never seen such creatures. The smallest one was over seven feet tall and must have weighed at least 400 pounds. I believe that this group has seen fighting recently. Each one was carrying enough firepower to arm a small platoon. But the real shock came when a security camera was able to get a close-up. These poor creatures are severely mutated, with the majority of their features only vaguely resembling that of human beings. I don't know if they're a product of nuclear radiation. They seem to share too many similarities with their muscle-bound frames to credit a random mutation. Their intrusion in the vault has fully woken up the calculator, and the emergency pacification protocol has been initiated. I don't believe the invading mutants were expecting to combat a behemoth, but the results were... 